I'm Nathan Hobby, biographer of Catherine Susanna Pritchard, the great Australian novelist and prominent communist. I want to give you a short account of her eventful early life. Catherine was born in Levuka, Fiji on the 4th of December 1883 to Australian parents. Her father, Tom, was working as editor of the Fiji Times. In a humorous poem about his baby daughter, Tom dubbed her Child of the Hurricane. Later in life, Catherine embellished the name and claimed that she was actually born in the middle of a hurricane. That's not true, but she did live through a hurricane more than two years later in March, 1886. It wrecked Levuka, causing many white colonists, including the Pritchards, to leave. The family returned to Melbourne and Tom struggled to find work over the next decade. In his spare time, he wrote poetry and fiction. From an early age, Catherine wanted to emulate him, setting out to be a writer herself. Denied the chance to go to university, she convinced her parents to let her work as a governess. She wanted to see more of Australia to give her material to write about. She was in Yarram in 1904, a town in Gippsland, and then on a station in outback New South Wales in 1905. The outback experience inspired a breakthrough serial which mixed romance and autobiography, A City Girl in Central Australia, published in New Idea in 1906. Throughout 1906 and into 1907, the family watched on helplessly as Tom's mental health deteriorated. After he killed himself late one June morning, Catherine became a resolute atheist. In that last year of Tom's life, a family friend she called the Pro Shavala began pursuing her. He was a newspaper editor and a social campaigner. She was to be entangled with him for a decade. Tom had been an outspoken political conservative, while the Pro Shavala was a political progressive. Exposed to a new world of ideas, Catherine's politics was shifting to the left. She wasn't a communist yet, but a patriotic reformist. Catherine also changed career after her father's death, following in his footsteps as a journalist. In 1908, New Idea commissioned her to conduct a series of interviews with celebrities in London and Paris. In 1911, when she returned to live in London, the pro Shavala moved with his family halfway across the world to be with her. Turning 30 at the end of 1913, she decided to enter Hodder and Stoughton's 1,000 pound novel competition, having saved enough money to work on a novel for three months. She returned to her observations of Gippsland from her 1904 notebook and weaved a fast paced novel about the 19th century settler colonists of the area, calling it The Pioneers. She was joint winner of the competition and The Pioneers was published in 1915. In the meantime, the Great War had broken out and Catherine was initially a patriotic supporter. Leaving the pro Shavala behind, she returned to Melbourne in January 1916 and became involved with a left-wing playboy named Guido Baraki. It was an unhappy relationship, but he drew her further into radical circles and she turned against the war. Something was desperately wrong with the world and she looked to the Russian Revolution of 1917 for answers. At the end of that year, her brother, Alan, was killed in France. Soon after, she was betrayed by Guido one last time when he suddenly married another woman he had just met. Catherine spent 1918 in a bush cottage, reading Karl Marx, writing a new novel, Black Opal, and corresponding with a soldier she had met in London, Hugo Frossel. A horse-loving outdoors man who had been awarded the Victoria Cross he came from a wealthy Western Australian family. He was sent home from the front late in the year and set his mind on wooing her. Wounded and devastated by the war, he told Catherine he was convinced by her radical politics and asked her to marry him. Impulsively, she agreed. They were married at the registry office in Melbourne on the 28th of January, 1919, the day the city was quarantined by the Spanish flu epidemic. After their honeymoon, they set off to make their home in Western Australia. Catherine thought she had found her happy ending and for a time she was right. Yet there was more tragedy and more triumph to follow as you can hear in part two.